Multi-genre artist Jelly Roll recently went on Andrew Schultz's podcast and ultimately started talking about this idea of God, Christianity, how the church has gotten things wrong. I still think what they're doing is wrong. What do you think is wrong about the church? I just think that they're, you know. But there's some other things he said that were a little uh, sus and troublesome. Jesus and the church is going to die. Again, Jesus is going to die all over again if they don't find a way to portray him the way he was historically known to be. Okay, so we're going to be getting into this conversation. So this is at the two hour and 16 minute mark where Akash asks him about his faith. I'm well, very interested in your view on God and spirituality and faith. My daughter is just turned 15. Mm -hmm. Okay. Last year, she started going to this little church back in this little country road, a little bitty church. When I was 14, the summer of that summer was the last year that I ever attended a church. Hmm. I got baptized that same summer and caught my first robbery case that same summer. Wow. Nice. That's crazy. You got baptized and then caught a case the same su summer. Wow. It's not like he was going to church and perhaps going to jail is what led him to stop going to church. So I'm, all these feelings are coming back up in me as she's like pounding me. Cause you know what people do when they find a church, you, know, you gotta come, you gotta come. It's like what they do. And I think that's cool. So I was like, I should go. So I go, cause I'm a father. You know what I mean? You support your kid. And like I tell people, if the kid wanted to play cricket, I'd have learned about cricket. It's a great game. You know what I mean? Like I'm in. So By the way, this is, this, this is him being a good dad. This attitude, this desire to let me be into what my kids are into. I think it's awesome. So I'm like, I'm going to church. And when I show up, I'm like, it was the first time in a long time that I didn't, I wasn't mad at the church. Mm -hmm. Priest provider protector collection is here. Priest, go out and make disciples. Provider, care for the least of these. And protector, be bold in a world that consistently rejects Jesus. Stop being docile. Pick up some merch at blessgod.shop right now. It's only available until Sunday. So get yours now. And I was just in there like, and I grew up a Christian kid. I got a cross on my face. You know what I mean? And... But I was like, I started looking at it from the people, not the preacher. And I was like, why are they here? Mm. And that changed my perspective of the church that afternoon. I was like, man, these people's intention is pure, at least in this little building. They're coming in here trying to cleanse something. They're trying to be better people. They're trying to set an example for their children, core principles of life, moral compasses. Like, they're not in here to create. This is like truly a safe space for these people. Like, this is like, and it made me think about why did I go to church when I was that age? What drew me to the church? And it was all my friends went. Why did I get baptized? And what led me to, and then of course I spent 10 years after that in jail reading nothing but religious material. I mean, I read about everything you can. I never got, I didn't get my GED till I was in my mid twenties in jail. It sounds like he is in jail and into his twenties and he's, you know, had a, some sort of faith experience when he was a teenager, drifted, I guess, to varying degrees. And is, is, I guess, coming kind of back around to the, to, to the church, which I think is good. And he's also talking about church and faith in a very utilitarian fashion. It's very like, oh, there's a utility to faith. There's a utility to church. There's a utility to religion. This is the same kind of stuff you hear talked about from the Jordan Petersons and the Ben Shapiros, and the, which is like, yeah, there's truth to that, right? There's, there, there's truth to that, but it's better than that. When we leave that church that next day, I'm like, yo, you won't believe this kid, but I used to go to a little church like this. And mm -hmm. I got bad pads when I was your age, and I had a bunch of homies, and I went on to, could have went one or two ways in life, and I went the, the wild route, so, and she kind of didn't believe me, and I was like, no, I'm telling you, dude, it's like the same church. It was called Witsit Chapel Baptist Church. It was on this little country road in the back ass of Antioch, between Antioch and Donaldson, sat across from the lake. Finally, one day, I'd take her. I'm like, I bet the building's still there. Mm. Bro, I pulled up. The building hasn't changed at all. I still think what they're doing is wrong, but I think that the spirit of which people go to these churches is more, and I try to judge things based on intent, mm -hmm. and I never seen the intent like I did watching my daughter and them go to that church. Mm -hmm. Can I ask, you, we don't have to put it in if you don't, what do you think is wrong about the church? Well, you can put this in. I just think that they're, you know, I think that you you can't pander to people that, that to think that we're all st stupid enough not to be free thinkers. And I hate that this like, out, like Jesus and the church is going to die again. Jesus is going to die all over again if they don't find a way to portray him the way he was historically known to be. All right. So that took a left turn. Um, Jesus and the church are going to die. I mean, my brother, Jesus and the church has been here for 2,000 years and counting. I don't know what he's saying here outside of if I'm being extremely charitable to this gentleman, I think what he's pointing to is a selection bias on his part, meaning that if all you know is what you know, if all you know is your experience with the church, and maybe you had a negative experience with church, which I don't know who he did, but it sounds like he did, or it sounds like, you know, and then you take that, you use that as a broad stroke to paint all of church. I don't know what happened to him in his church. I don't know what happened with his relationship with Christians. I don't know what he's exactly talking about. Are there churches that probably do this to varying degrees? I would say yes. But Jesus was also very clear that like the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. 
Not the version of which y'all let Constantine and, the, and all these people come together. Oh, not Constantine. Jelly Roll, I was with you, bro. He pulled out the Inconstantine, created the Trinity in the year 325 and canonized the Bible and ruined Christ. No, Jelly Roll, no, my brother. I would hope that when people are making albums about church and Christianity, that at least somewhere in the process you'd get some solid Christians in the mix and and just have them sit with you and walk you through it just a tad bit of the church history so that you're not jumping out the window and talking about the Nicene Creed creating the Trinity. If you look at the history facts of Jesus, which I think favor Christianity in this weird way, when you look at those, that dude is not the dude y'all have turned him into. Mm. Like, y'all have Americanized Jesus and used him as a way of not only propaganda, but you've weaponized God. Yeah, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, maybe again, maybe from his perspective that th this is accurate. The the overlap of like West Barrel Baptist type Christians with the MAGA crowd and the hyper nationalism in the Bible Belt is what he's getting at. The same people that you are you are like criticizing and going against are the only people that Jesus had a relationship with in the Bible. The only people? Because I remember Nicodemus, one of the Pharisees, coming to Jesus and, and interacting with Jesus. Nicodemus was religious. You know what the first miracle was in the Bible? Pop quiz. Water into wine, baby. He turned water into wine for his mother at a wedding reception. That's that. That's a that's a pretty amazing miracle, and that just shows that Jesus cared about celebration. See, I think in American culture, we because of purity culture and maybe some influence from the Puritans, we've kind of watered down celebration, and we've made any type of celebration directly connected to sin. And the truth is, you can celebrate without sinning. His mother comes up to him, so she knows he can do crazy, shit, right? Because she walks up like, "Yo, I need a favor." In so many words, can we? I need a party trick here. Yeah. Like, fuck, this is like a really whack party. Like, she only talks to God when she needs a favor. Yeah, yeah she only talks to God when she needs a favor. Yeah. Right? She's like, yo, can you, like, do something about this? Help you out, Jelly. It was a wedding reception. They were running out of wine. To run out of wine would have been extremely humiliating to that family. So it wasn't as much about a party trick as as much as his mom didn't want people that they were close to to be dismissed and ridiculed and, you know, humiliated for running out of wine out of wedding. He says it's not my time, which leads me to believe that she's probably seen a resurrected squirrel or something. I don't know. You know what I mean? She knows he can do something. That's funny. That's funny. Resurrected squirrel. I like that. <laughs> and she hits him with the please. And just like any other good son who loves his mom, she turns water into wine. You're telling me this dude gives a f about gay people? Mm. Oh, he went to the, he went to the, yeah, he would, yeah, I see. I see where this is going. This dude, the first thing he did was a party favor. Yeah. And then if you look at his history, he did nothing but protect town what? What? Are we <laughs> Yo, he went from <laughs> he went from party favor, magic trick, uh, the LG TV to uh, <laughs> town hall. Yes. I love this dude. I can't. I'm not gonna lie. Like this dude, he's very likable. Like the famous story of the throwing stones, let he who without sin cast his first stone. He was protecting a prostitute. Mm. He said, in so many words, and I always the Christians get so mad when I. Fuck. I'm, I'm not. I'm not mad at you, Jelly Roll. I'm really not. I, you're entertaining. I just want to help you out when you when when you when you have these opportunities to talk about the faith. I just want to help you. I'm 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 literally tearing up from how funny that was. Okay, so I'm not mad at you. Go anyways. Jelly Roll, come on, man. You don't got to be so defensive, bro. Hey, man. You know what about this girl over here? She's cheating on her husband. He goes, y'all ain't never on your girl. <laughs> This is the most possibly modernized eisegesis reading into the text interpretation of scripture I may have ever heard. This is amazing. Literally. And, and not in a good way. That's what he says in the Jesus way. It's like, you ain't, never, you ain't never cheating like That's not what he said, Jelly. We're going to look at all of it. Ever? And these dudes are like, well, he's like, then shut the f up. <laughs> he never looked up from the dirt. It's like, man, that's the opposite of what that dude was doing. So that's my problem with the church. Y'all are, this dude ran around with 12 thugs. If he was here today, he'd be on a f Harley. He'd be going to a bar. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I'll give you another one. You ready for this? He flipped a table over in the temple. Let's put on our thinking caps. Point number one, Jesus only protected the town. John chapter three, uh, Nicodemus. Jesus teaches Nicodemus. Nicodemus, now there was a Pharisee. Okay, a Pharisee is a religious man. A Pharisee is not a town. 
A Pharisee is not a dude on a Harley. A Pharisee is not a dude with a bunch of face tattoos. Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. So this is someone that is in a position of influence, this is someone in a position of power. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. So here you got Nicodemus affirming Jesus. It, it, it sounds like he's affirming his identity as the Messiah almost, right? But he was afraid because he was a Pharisee, and a Pharisee didn't rock with Jesus, okay? Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again, okay? So this is all going to connect, okay? So just, just bear with me. How can someone be born when they are old, Nicodemus asked? Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows, whatever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the spirit. How can this be, Nicodemus said? And he says, you are Israel's teacher, Jesus said. And do you not understand these things? Okay, so Jesus is being direct with Nicodemus. He's not being soft. He's not He's not conversing with him with, with kitty gloves, but this is also not the same where Jesus is going super duper hard at the Pharisees, right? Or or even some of the harsh language that Jesus has used with Peter, where he tells, you know, tells Peter when Peter was getting in the way of the cross, get behind these Satan. But he's being very direct. You, you're a teacher of Israel, and you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen, but still you people do not accept our testimony. I've spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak to you of heavenly things? Remember, this is Jesus speaking to a Pharisee, right? This is Jesus speaking to a Pharisee. No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who has come from heaven, the Son of Man. This is, again, Jesus saying he's the only one that's been in the, in the place with the Father. He's the only one that's seen the Father. And so he says, just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. And then this is John writing, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but this is the part that Jelly Roll, and I think a lot of folks need to get. And and, and so people will quote the words of Jesus, but they won't quote the rest of the, the chapters, the rest of what's being said. But whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people loved darkness and instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that they may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. In order to get into the kingdom of heaven, you must be born again. And then it goes into the gospel. And the gospel is is is, is good news, right? God so loved the world that he gave his only son, but that whoever believes in him shall not, and, and shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send in, uh, his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Verse 8. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. And this is, but this is, the, this is the harsh reality. This is the bad news. But whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one only son. So here's the issue that, according to Jelly Roll, that because people say something negative about his wife, I don't know anything about his wife. I have, I have no idea what his wife. Or because people point out what, what natural law is in terms of what marriage was intended for, okay? And him trying to take this neutral approach, which, by the way, you cannot be neutral on these topics. And I, I'm sure, based on the stuff he's seeing push, maybe it's not pushed down south, but here in California, my brother, there's a lot of stuff being pushed in the public school system, right? It's telling you that those who don't believe stand condemned already. This is the bad news. And then verse 19, and this is the verdict. Light comes into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. People are evil. People are born into sin. This is called original sin. Everyone who loves, who everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for the fear that their deeds will be exposed. Now, he mentioned the story of the woman caught in adultery. Okay, so let's go over. That's just a couple chapters over. So now the teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law of Moses, commanded us to stone such a woman. Now, what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened him out and he said, let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone. Okay, so he doesn't say anything about you, you've been sleeping around and you've been doing this. and that. He just, he just wrote. There's a mystery to the story. We don't know what he wrote. I don't think we're supposed to know what he wrote. 
Again, he stood up and wrote on the ground. At this, those who heard began to go away one at a time, the older one first, until only Jesus was left with the woman still standing there. Jesus straightened up and asked her, woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No, sir, she said. Neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Now, this is the part of the story everybody leaves out. Jelly Roll, you can't leave this part out, my brother, because the end of the story, the punchline, neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go now and leave your life of sin. Go now and leave your life of sin. That's the punchline, that if you look at it in context of, of, of John 3, you must be born again. God so loved the world, he sent his son into the world, right? The world's condemned on its own. And then he's telling her, go now and leave your life of sin. That's the punchline. That's the part where, where, where people just want the, the grace aspect of God. They want the mercy of God. They want the ability to, 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 to do with, with, without will. They want to be their own God because it's, because it's not just about willing your way into a life of sin. The, the, the beautiful part about being born again is there's so many verses about this, but check this one out. This is one of my favorites. I talk about it all the time, Philippians chapter 2. Dear friends, you always follow my instructions when I was with you, and now that I'm away, it is even more important. Work hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep reverence and fear, for God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. This is the beautiful part, right? So the punchline of go now and sin no more. Juxtapose that with being born again. What is being born again? That means the old man dies, the new man is born again. That's what baptism symbolizes. So when you got baptized when you were 14, what, what that symbolized is that in the same way you go into the water, that symbolizes your death, you coming out, is you now being raised to new life with Jesus, and now you're professing and publicly making a declaration of this. And so that that's that is the born again regenerative experience. The, meaning that you were once dead, you 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 chose your flesh, you chose to live for your carnal desires. Now you're born again. When you're born again, it says that God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. There's so much misunderstanding on his part. It's not about any one specific sin, that all of, the, all of it is wrong, all of it is offensive to a holy God. That is why Jesus had to come and live the life we couldn't live, died the death we should have died on the cross in our place for our sins, and then rise on the third day so that we can be reconciled back to God, so we could be put in a right standing, right? And so that we could ultimately die to our sinful nature and be born again, have new desires, new hearts, and then we get the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is what gives us these new desires to obey God and the power to do so. But it's not just, oh, the LGTV are bad, or oh, the, the Transformers are bad. No, 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 the dude sleeping with his girlfriend is, is, is standing just as condemned. The dude cheating on his taxes is standing just as condemned. The dude, right, like, we're all, we're all condemned, and, and the cross just becomes that, that great leveler, like that, that, like, yo, we're all foul, but we don't have to stay that way. We don't have to continue living that way. We don't have to continue living knowing that the wages of sin is death, sometimes in a literal, in a literal sense. Sometimes your sin will lead you to death. You don't have to keep living your life completely enamorated by your own carnal desires, doing whatever your flesh wants to do, right? That, that you could be born again. You could have new desires with a new trajectory for your life. That is the good news. God gives us the desire and the power to do what pleases him. So we get the desire and the power. So the things I used to hate, now I love. I used to hate going to church. All of a sudden, I love going to church. The things I used to love, like, like, like sin, I hate. I, can't, I still struggle with them sometimes. I may still fall short, but I hate those things, and I'm waging war on those aspects of my life. And so I think, I think Jelly Roll is just mistaken about this stuff, and he's, 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 he's meaning well, but he's kind of fumbling in the way he's articulating this. And it always goes back to like, why are you guys mad at those people over there? No one is mad at those people over there. We're pointing and standing on what the scriptures say. By the way, the scriptures that went to influence how modern Western civilization was built, the same value system, right? The same value system that built what's going on here. And, and it made all the advancements in, 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 in education, in medicine, in science, those scriptures. We're just pointing back to those, right? Like Romans 1 says what it says. People gave up the worshiping of the creator in, in exchange for worshiping the creation. And so God handed them over to whatever it is that they wanted to do. That's not, that's not, that's not Christians are bad or the church is bad because Jesus was a rebel outlaw who saved the town whores and hung out with thugs. Like, no, that's, that's, that's not what it is. Jesus is, is, is there, was, there was aspects of him that came off rebellious, perhaps, but that was not who he was. Jesus was the son of God. Jesus was the savior of the world. He was the Messiah, 
right? He he was the, the perfect sacrificial lamb, and it's so much more, and it's so much better than what he thinks it is. It's so much better than what he thinks it is. And so you don't have to believe that, Jelly Roll. Like, you don't have to believe that, but at least get it right. At least, at least get the bare minimal of the narrative correct. If you're going to be reciting, at least get it right. Priest Provider Protector Collection is here. Priest, go out and make disciples. Provider, care for the least of these. And Protector, be bold in a world that consistently rejects Jesus. Stop being docile. Pick up some merch at blessgod.shop right now. It's only available until Sunday, so get yours now.